Welcome to our latest episode of To The Last Drop. With me, as per usual, is Brendan Nell. Uh, and this week, we are looking ahead to the Springboks quarterfinal against France at the Stade de France on Saturday. And what an occasion that will be. To help us plough through all of this, because there's got a bit to get through, uh, we've got one of the uh, finest rugby brands in the country with us today. And we're very thankful for him, uh, to him for, his, uh, for the time he set aside. Uh, to join us. Swes the Brain, welcome to our show. Thanks, Liam. Thank, it's so nice to talk to you guys. Thanks, Brendan. Well, yeah, look, there's a lot to get through, Swes. Um, and uh, yeah, let, let me just firstly give Brendan a chance to say hello as well. Sorry, Brendan. <laughs> don't worry, I don't mind. I don't mind being in the background. Uh, <laughs> I, I was just going to say, Swes has got a tee-off time soon, so we can't waste too much of his time. Oh, dear. Uh, even though he's going to be playing in the rain today, it looks like it's going to be a bit wet. Stay out of the water, Swayze. <laughs> yeah, I don't see too much. We need the rain, but it's always the toss-up, you know, between the rain and the golf. But uh, in this case, I think the rain is more important. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Look, uh, there's a lot to get through. Um, it's a huge game. The, uh, you know, South Africa go into this game with uh, a fairly decent record. Um, and France as well, if you look at their performances over the last year and a half. Um, Brendan told me about a little stat earlier that was quite fascinating. Um, you know, sometimes you get an idea in your head and you kind of reinforce it as you go along uh, until you are tapped on the shoulder and, you know, pointed in the right direction. Um, and, and this pertains to the box scrum. Brendan, tell us. Yeah, it was, just, it was quite, a, quite an interesting one. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, we always think the spring box scrum is the best in, in, the, uh, in the competition. I'm just trying to get the 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 stat here, uh, but yeah, the, the the box scrum is the seventh best in the competition, and I thought that was quite fascinating. I didn't think I didn't think we were that bad. But I take it that's in t terms of own scrums one. Oh yeah, yeah sorry, yeah, he has, he has the he has the stat. The Springboks have also lost the most scrums per game of this group, for the second worst success rate, eighty one percent, and rank only fifth for line out success, eighty nine percent. Yeah, that, that just just quickly on that those the, the the scrum stats that normally can be very subjective as well. For example, there you had three or four scrums in a game and uh, one penalty against one four. Then suddenly it stuffs the whole stat up. So it, uh, mm -hmm. seen as a whole, we're still looking good with the platform from a scrum that we have. Uh, you know, and 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 often you look at a competition of scrums. It will be ninety two, ninety one, ninety eight. It's very close that percentages on on a scrum stat. So that's a bit of a misleading stat. Uh, what is what is important is one or two scrums after half time that we did got penalised, uh, which wasn't good in 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 in, in our previous game. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, you need to win the right scrums at the right time. For example, an hour off. I know Rossi wants a scrum for penalty. In there off, he wants in out to play to see if we can get our forwards on, on quick ball. So it all depends as well where is the scrum and what do you want to achieve. Sometimes you just want to set up to kick out or, or whatever situ the situation is. But I still believe we've got a very good platform from our scrums. So as given our resources and the way we deploy it, because we've got uh, front rankers in particular that, uh, you know, the, the workload is spread almost 50-50 because these guys are are very similar in terms of the output. Um, what does that do to a scrum? Do you do you think that um, you know other teams might uh, rely more on a particular uh, set of, of front front rankers who play longer uh, in terms of output and consistency? What, what do you think that does to our scrum? Yeah, just firstly, if I understand you correctly, Liam, uh, we've got two packs of forward, two two sets of tight five. And with before Malcolm's injury, we had a definite uh, cuts off Malcolm France front row and Trevor Bongi and, and and Ox front row. And why they worked so well in combination as well uh, these two front rows is because of their years of playing together. Firstly, secondly, their height and how they set and getting used to one another. A front row is very much like a halfback pairing. They you get a unit and you get together and 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 and. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if, you, if I answered your question correctly. I think I missed mm. the first part slightly. But uh, we've, we're very fortunate. But now with Malcolm out, the, the dynamic has changed a bit. 
with Dion Fury coming in, it's not. He is definitely a very good player. He steals ball. He's a loose forward. But I'm not so convinced that he's in the same. That he's in the same category as scrumming uh, compared to the other two. Yeah, I was gonna so I swear. I mean, the one thing that I think to me is 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 still the biggest worry for me this weekend's game is is the fact that we tend to, and this is not a new thing. This entire season, we've created a lot of chances in the twenty-two. We get ourselves into those try-scoring positions, and and we, and we don't finish them off. Um, Jacques spoken about it a number of times in press conferences. Um, we've seen it. Uh, we've seen it. Be a, obviously a huge factor against Ireland. I know everyone concentrated on the goal kicking, but that to me was almost de the deadliest part of it. Um, just I don't know from a coach's point of view, how do you one rectify that? And uh, what are, what do you see as the problem why we don't finish off these chances? Yeah, firstly, uh, there's not much variation. It's off nine. Off nine means uh, nine is the passer to a forward to dips and then a cleaner, and there they go. And they repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And good defensive teams can defend that all day. And sooner or later, uh, you know, there's a there's a penalty or or someone diving in. It's very hard to stay focused and concentrate on attack if you're one dimensional. Meaning there's no guy coming from the outside shoulder running onto the blind eye. There's no pick and go in between. Uh, you know, there's no switch maybe from 12 with the forwards back. So we just playing and that same thing, we're backing our physical strength, which helps for us. The advantage if you do that with the law now, every time I dip and drive, there might be a head contact. So, and not for the attacking team, for the defensive team. So I don't know what's their method and their madness. I can play until I get until I get a yellow. If if I attack well with my head, with this stupid law application at the moment, and I can't, I don't have a better word for it because it's getting a fuss. Uh, but on your question, we are at the moment, unfortunately, a bit one-dimensional with our with our with our red zone play. Meaning, when we need to go convert and convert and score the try. That's an interesting one uh, in that uh, the way you explained it there. It's, it's you know, there's you can make a case for for doing the same thing, and you know, you kind of get the reward if you you know if you do it well. Um, the box that has been said often over the last while have, have added a layer to the attacking play. Um, it's a World Cup quarterfinal this time. Um, how do you how do you navigate those waters? Do you do you play sort of what we know as sort of term knockout rugby, or do you continue with the way they've gone about their business? Yeah, it's very dangerous now to come with new fancy stuff. You got to stick to your DNA. I have to first question earlier. You've got to scrum well, and your malls and lineups got to be good so that you can get the front front football. It's all about the launch, you know. And we did it so well before the World Cup. If we pretend like we're going to maul and see our breaks out, and we hit the vacuum, and Andre Estrej and Damian Dalinda, they're so powerful with that. So we can turn their shoulders. We can get them on the front foot. But at the at, at the moment, to answer your question, we can't be too fancy. We got to play, build an innings, and go to our strength and take three points in six points that Rossi picked up to now. Where I would have gone for a few more balls, uh, you know, kick it for corner. Because how do you bring your pack into play, Liam? There's only one thing if you wanna you got to do it from lineouts, uh, especially, and 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 if you or scrums, and if you play a lot, you get a lot of scrums and and it leads to penalties so that you can kick it out and so the one feeds the other but mm. if you every time just take three points and you don't really bring your power pack into play or your two packs and they kick off again from your off set up a box kick you're taking your you're taking your wisdom teeth out by doing that so mm. for me i'll definitely be could do what we do more well scrum well uh go at the right times for the especially those kicks that you know might be missed uh, you know, if I know it's a slot, a different story. You want to build scoreboard pressure. But there's various ways of building score, scoreboard pressure. And for me, with our brilliant tight fives that we have, two of them, or two packs of forwards, the more they play. I, I, oh man, I remember so well. If you play a lot and you pick and go and you run, who, may, who must defend? Their tighties. So if you play a lot and you tire their tighties, and now suddenly they must stop a mall, and there's a mistake. I want to scrum a lot, play a lot, and maul a lot if I've got two packs of forwards. I don't want to take three points and and 
and don't uh, receive a kickoff. And the play of the match is only 27 minutes. I want to take the play to, if I've got two packs, I want to have 36 minutes of rugby. Then I'll, mm. I'll, I'll, you can take them to the cleaners. But mm. you don't want to give that one pack of these every time chance, kick for poles, rest a minute, kick off, play there. Uh, that is the chess game that I, I feel we must get right if we want success. Just on that point, Swiss, and we've amused about this in the, in the World Cup, uh, some of the reporters, whether it hasn't been a ploy, maybe a ploy by the box, because uh, the mall hasn't been used with the frequency that we uh, perhaps expected them to, to use it. Uh, do you think it's something that they've deliberately decided to hide? Maybe, maybe. Because uh, uh, cast your mind back a few weeks, we were definitely fantastic with not only the mall playing off the mall as well, you see the variation and the blind side tries we scored with our hookers, if you can recall that. So if you've got your four or five options, and we call it the rhino attack system of your lineouts, if you're very clever with that, you know, you do bring your guys into play. But to answer your question, maybe they, they were hiding it up to now, because if you want to come with something special, it's now the time. Uh, and and so it's just on that point. I mean, I suppose it comes down to the next question, which I think a lot of South Africa is asking: Who do you play then? If you're going to play not fancy rugby, you're going to play knockout rugby. Do you still go with Marnie, uh, or do you go with Andre because been there, done it, BMT, all that sort of argument? How they deploy those two is, is up to them. I will definitely go now. Use Marnie uh, later later on when the forwards are more tired, when there's more space. Bring him on as an impact player, but you got to bring him on. you got to utilize him. Or you, you move on 100 to 12 and you bring him in as a combination. I said it in the past as well. I think it's eight times every time when Elton came on and, all, and, and Pollard moved to 12, we won the game. So, and then and the, you see it, then you can, then your space is wider, is a bit more open. But how they utilize that uh, for starters, uh, I think it is, uh, I would have gone for Pollard. Uh, although I'm not saying he's better than 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 Marnie, uh, I say Marnie is brilliant, and Marnie showed it in the URC. And Marnie came up, and his confidence is up. He came up that first kick, uh, uh, taking over from Pollard when he slotted that as Brendan, that I was standing up in my lounge and, and praying and hoping that he slots it, and he did. So his confidence is back up. He did give the credit to Pollard that they're a combination; they back one another. Yeah, so. Uh, Start with start with Pollard, see how it goes, because he can take us direct, you know, with the the, the twelve centre. He likes that. He likes the show and go, where Marnie likes playing out the back more, and using his feet and his and his and his uh, and his talents wider. I was going to say also the other the other talking point is of course Anton Dupont, Le Petit, Petit Zorro, as we are calling him. Apparently, he's going to play with a scrum cap and a mask. So he's going to look uh, rather bizarre when he comes on. We, yeah, I heard. <laughs> we asked this question last week. Someone's... Sorry, go yes, ahead. Sorry. No, just on that, someone said he's going to look like mankind on the <laughs> WWF. <laughs> yeah, um, we asked the question of Dobbo, John Dobson last week. He was on the pod last week. And we asked him about you know, bringing in a guy like that at this week and rushing him back and you know what sort of the, the psychology of it. And Dobbo had quite an interesting answer where he said, yeah, the um, the fact that you he's done it, it's it's backfired on him in the past. Where with Evan Ruiz, where he gave him until the captain's practice, until the warm up, and then the guy w withdraws in the warm up or gets a knock in the first five minutes of the game, and he says you can actually see the whole team deflate. Uh, I just wanted to get your oh, take sure. on it. No, hundred percent sure. But look, Pollard is ready and ready to rumble. He trains trains full on, so it's not a case of waiting. There's no waiting time. They can make their decision. They sit with the luxury. Are you referring to the two fly-offs? No, no, I'm uh, to Anton Dupont on the French side. Them rushing him back with. Oh, the, oh sorry, 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 sorry. I was uh, 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 you're on the pond now. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Sorry, I missed you. You'll have to cut this this section. On the pond, very, very good point. I had a, a talk yesterday with rugby guys about this as well. I hope for their sake that the pond made enough contact that he's ready in his mind. Because one thing, uh, you know, if there's opportunity, you won't find, find much. But if you, you hit him, the guy's going to get hit him hard. They're definitely going to test him up. Is his mind strong enough? And, and and then if it's too late, you know, so that can backfire for them, for sure. That can definitely backfire for them. But then listening to guys earlier about his, his uh, mental toughness, they say he's one of those guys you don't rattle him. 
uh, uh, in his rugby career from a junior as well. That's his biggest attribute. His calmness it doesn't matter what happens to him. He can he can stand up and fight. You know, so uh, I I think it depends on the individual. I remember with certain guys, I won't mention names. Oh, you, you if you take a, if you wait till the end, you know he's going to pack up in the in the warm up, or he's going to pack up early in the game, and that's a killer. You don't you you don't want that e uh, want want that either. Since you see, the position is important as well. If he was a front row or loose forward. Or centre with that face problem, different scenario. But playing nine, you, you can definitely the 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 the, the, the situation and the back end protecting. Just on that point, uh, uh, Rassi was kind of asked about uh, Dupont uh, in yesterday's press conference, um, and he made the point that um, Dupont never looks like he's flustered or he's never sort of broken into a sweat in in matches. So exactly, was, that's my yeah. point. Mm. He's mentally, Liam. He's mentally so tough, uh, you know, and and that's a picture he portrays to the team as well. That's why they'll push him. They'll start with him, and they'll f and and um, I'm sure he'll be fine. But things saying that if that bone uh, is still a problem, they wouldn't have played him. There's no mm. way because they, apparently yeah. that thing can't break a second time. Then you sit with troubles. Then it's face surgery, and then it's a then it's not a good one. Uh, mm. So. Uh, he's fine. The, the 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 question is what Brendan asks. Is he fine in his mind? You know mm. that is the question as well. Yeah. Then it's going to be hunchback of Notre Dame um, territory. <laughs> another, I mean, the other thing I wanted to ask you, and it's 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 almost on the same point. Um, the dynamic uh, uh, of Dante potentially running at Mani if Mani starts, um, and as well as Damien Dalinde at at Jalabe. Um, do you think those two? Uh, channels will will get a lot of traffic and, and how the potential flyers will deal with it. Yeah, obvious uh, for, for sure because they, they'll prep a big, big, big time on the mall stop both teams because you don't want to get mauled. Psychology tells you once they maul you, you uh, uh, you know one negative builds and, and it becomes synergy. One plus one becomes four. You don't want to get mauled. So what I would do if I if they're going to stop our mall, I'll practice a lot of pulling out of that mall and on the 10-12 gap, right on the outside shoulder of 10, and then do a job on him, you know. And if I say do a job, especially on the cleaning section, uh, I remember when we played years back, we played Foley, and our plan was on Foley from the mall. They think we're going to mall, we're not mauling, we're on Foley. And whenever you clean Foley, you tell Foley there's more to come. So, so that is one of those ploys that I would definitely utilize Especially, you know, if the right runner comes around that corner and, and a soft pass from the hooker to Darlinda or, or to Estres and kind of a carrier there, or even the loose forward himself, you just pump your legs and you say, okay, here we go. So 10 12 channel, definitely, and especially on the, on the weaker shoulder then of that 10 defending there. I think the last question from me, Swayze, is just, I mean, last year the box. You know, came close with 14 men. They had that red card quite early. Um, and obviously there was the whole controversy with Wayne Barnes with some of the decisions he made right at the end of that game. But um, do you think that that sort of factors any... I know it's a total, it's a World Cup, the pressure's different, and the games often in the past don't really matter. But the, the fact that the box went there and with 14 men almost won that game, do you think that'll give them some some sort of confidence going into this game? For sure, for sure. I went through that game again two uh, two days ago. There's one or two things that happened there that did concern me. We can't carry and get isolated two or three times. You know, that, that for me was a concern. But they'll get a lot of confidence that we could really... Just remember, it was it was 14 men, but then for the last uh, 15 mm. minutes, it was 14 versus 14 again. Mm. So... Dupont got uh, sent off. Yes, when the pond got, got, got sent off. But you... you that gives help anything that gives confidence or markers that you that happened in the past that you can use to give confidence. So Rusty will mention a few times, guys. Yeah, we we gave them with fourteen men. Imagine what we can do with fifteen. That sort of so uh, that you use that. You put that in the fridge and you use that to 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 give you confidence. In fact, he addressed that matter yesterday, uh, and he said that oh, although he? it was a defeat. Um, that was probably one of the proudest moments that he felt, um, even in defeat, the way the team responded and the way they problem-solved 
almost by themselves. They, you know, they figured things out and they, you know, they fronted up and did what they needed to do. So um, I didn't, so I he, didn't he see the interview. Of, uh, Liam, I didn't see the interview, but I tell you one thing for nothing. I know Rossi well, and he's the master of the mind. He gives you t them tons and tons and tons of confidence, and he pick various things. He knows he, he's got in his arsenal of various things that he used to get them up ready maximum. So I, I'm not surprised that it's uh, that you would say, you know, guys, we did it with 14. We'll do it with 13. Imagine we've got 15. You know that sort of thing. And and say it at the right times as well. He picks his timing with these things perfectly as well. Yeah. No, well, it's gonna be it's gonna be a humding over game. Um, so as I think we're gonna let you go for your tea of time. I think uh, you you're probably ready to swing a few golf clubs there. But thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been very insightful. And yeah, uh, hopefully we uh, we have that perfect game because I think the box are gonna need to do a, be a lot more disciplined uh, and a lot more focused and clinical than they probably were against Ireland if they're going to win this one. So uh, thanks for joining us again and, and hope you have a good round. Yeah, listen, always speaking to two masterminds like you two is such a pleasure. And you you did say it at the end. The, the most, most important thing with the crowds, with everything, there is going to be discipline. Discipline, discipline, discipline because the 50-50 calls will go against us and then the discipline must pull us through <laughs> no definitely no well thanks and then, as i say enjoy your round and we'll we'll chat again soon about this so thanks for joining us on the pod so it's okay. from his wing back chair i might add and uh, you know i wish a lot of people could could see the, the relative comfort he's sitting thanks always. <laughs>